All right, and now we'll continue our conversation with uh, database storage by talking about concurrency, versioning, and backup and restore. Let's start off by talking about concurrency control. A data entity maintains its integrity for competing accessors via concurrency control. What I mean by that is there's a piece of data that you have in a table somewhere, some kind of database, and you might have multiple stateless applications that are all trying to compete for it at the same time. And we want to make sure that that data doesn't become corrupt in any way. So we need to have some kind of concurrency control to make sure that only one operation at a time is manipulating that piece of data. There's two kinds of concurrency control. There's pessimistic and then there's optimistic. With pessimistic concurrency control, the code that's trying to access the data entity, it'll typically take a lock over one or possibly multiple entries in the database. Um, that will block other accessors so they can't manipulate that data at the same time. So now the data is accessible exclusively to only one of the accessors. That access, accessor that has the lock can then go and modify the entity or entities, and then ultimately it would unlock the locks or release the locks that would allow other accessors to come in to manipulate that piece of data. This is what's been done historically for a very long time. And um, while it's useful and valuable, it does have some bad scalab uh, scalability uh, characteristics about it. In particular, it means that there's only one accessor at a time that can access the data. So if you have many accessors trying to get at the same piece of data, they all line up sequentially and they process the data one at a time. You're not getting any concurrency there. The other problem with this pattern is that what happens if the accessor that locks the data fails, in which case the lock doesn't get released. So now you have a piece of data that's locked, no other accessor can get to it because the accessor who locked it has died before they released it. So that can cause a lot of problems, and this is typically what introduces people to use leases. I'll take the lock, it can be had, but only for a short period of time. And if the locker dies or crashes or fails for some reason, then the lease will eventually expire so somebody else can access the data. That's also potentially problematic because it could be that the accessor that took the lock on the data modified some of the data but hasn't completed modifying it yet, then they die, then the lease gets released, and another accessor accesses the data, but it's not in a consistent state because the first accessor that died didn't complete all the updates. Now the other accesses are acting on corrupted data, and that's you know, not ideal right, when that happens. So, so there's a bunch of problems with this pattern, but it, it has been used, and there are certain places where it can be used successfully. But it has led to a different pattern, which is the optimistic concurrency pattern. With this pattern, the accessor gets the entries that it needs. It grabs a copy of the entries that it needs off of the data, and those entries come with a version ID. Sometimes we call those things E tags for entity tags. Then the accessor goes and modifies those values, and then it goes and updates the table and says, here's what I want the values to become. But the table, or the database only allows the update to occur if the version IDs or the E tags of the entities, the data entities, hasn't changed, uh, if they're still the same from when the, uh, the accessor went and grabbed the values out of it. Um, I know this can be rather complicated to understand, and so I have a slide, where, an animated slide, where I can walk you through exactly how this pattern works. Uh, and then, as I say here at the bottom, if any version ID has changed, that means the data was changed behind the accessor's back, and then the accessor has to retry the whole operation again. So yet again, we see another place where retries are being used in order to deal with fault tolerance. In this case, we're dealing with it with concurrency scenarios. 